but yeah, we'll not wait. showing the hole is generally good advice. On that note, as threatened, I'm back. Uh, later, years later, cheers. Michael Dawson, Chip Walton, welcome once again. We are revisiting my Gig Yeast experimental beers. I just rewatched the two videos I did on these three beers, and I said, I'm going to have these beers around for years, so we'll get to try them again. Here we are. A uh, year and a half later, after first trying the Berliner Weiss, which is now about almost two and a half years old, last time we tasted it was March of 2016, it is September of 20, it's almost October, but it's late September of 2017, so a year and a half later, drinking the Berliner Weiss, what do we think? Uh, how is it drinking now, and if we have the ability to recall how it tasted, Back then, do we think it's changed in the last year and a half? I say yes, it has changed. I think it's more tart. Not enamel strippingly tart, but more tart than it was. Uh, I like it. I agree. I've been able to kind of track this beer. I've had it every few months over the last year and a half, and there was a one time, I can't remember how long ago, I would say it was in 2017 where I had some and I just kind of looked at it and I thought, wow, this this is now more tart than it was. It just sort of hit me at that time. And I appreciate if you guys are also kind of thinking that way. You've had it before. I don't know how, if you've had it as much. I don't remember. Oh, I, I, I you imagine should have watched you. the video. I imagine you have. <laughs> you weren't in the video, but I do well, believe. I could have watched the video. I do believe that you have I do watch have videos I'm not in. Barely. I actually don't watch videos I'm in. Yeah, if there's cats. Um, yeah, no, I, it's got a, a nice lactic sting about it, but like you guys said, it's a little bigger than a regular Berliner White, so it's definitely got malt oomph behind it. And I think that kind of blunts the edge still, even two and a half yep. years on, yep. of the, the change in tartness or acidity I that agree. we're perceiving. Sure. That was our comment earlier, that was your comment, if it would have been a 1040 beer instead of a 1050 beer, it would have drank more tart perception, um, but it had more malt character, more residual body there, even though it did get down to 1005, 1.005, but I feel that it is interesting that it has continued to change. In the winter, it's stored in a place that is quite cool, but in the summer, that place is not as cool, so whatever bacteria that's still in there and doing its thing does... Continue to change the character. Get all riled back up. Yeah, boy. So, uh... Do you still get a rosy aroma? Such a specific <sighs> aroma. I remember, I remember that rose being really distinct hmm. when this beer was younger, like 10 months or whatever it was we, we first drank it at. Yeah, it's right. still kind of floral to me, but it's not... Yeah. It's, maybe it's just tonight. Maybe it's just this bottle, but it's not reading as, like, that distinct. An aroma's definitely after. fade with time, right? I mean, that's something that does fade. Okay, so that's a quick check-in on this. We got a few more. I'm whipping the whip. I'm whipping these guys into shape. We're gonna keep keep sampling. More samples. <laughs> it's like uh, the monks toning... No, prayer wheel. Or like... Same yeah. Bowls. Like we're gonna climb uh, oh. the Nepalese mountain uh, for our prayer flags. All right, we're back with the Saison Sour, the Sour Saison, the whatever it is blend of Saison, Ale Yeast, and Lactic Acid Bacteria. This one finished at 1.002, so three points drier than the Berliner blend. It was the same original wort to split. Here we are uh, all this time later, and uh, what do we think now, fellas? I like this one a little bit more than the first one. It's a little more complex, a little more characterful. Definitely drier. The numbers alone would say that, but I also feel like whatever's in that blend is also giving off a sense of dryness without being any more um, kind of painful on the back of the throat. Right. Drying, scratchy. Mike said red delicious apples, and now I can't unsmell it. That's funny. I, I would think it. if I was going to apples, I would think more of Granny Smith or some kind of. Uh, no, I, just, I get that like, like sweet. That, but it's not. It's not like a green apple acetaldehyde kind of thing. It's like a red, juicy. Okay. But I do agree with your original statements. 
a year and a half ago about white wine. Yeah. You could pick your white wine that it reminded you of, Savignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Riesling is what you were saying before. Mm -hmm. Just some kind of white wine. I do think that that's coming through. Now, does that from the, or a related to the lactic acid, or is that just the Cezanne? It's, it's kind of hard to parse, especially um, when it gets to be this old. I think what's coming from the bacteria, what could be coming from the yeast, what could be coming from time. You know, because I remember we were getting some phenolic and kind of farmhouse notes earlier on. Yeah, you were talking about that. Those are kind of gone, interestingly enough. You, you were talking about that before, uh, like a funky farmhousey bready character, even though there isn't bread. But mm -hmm. uh, black pepper was one of the aromatic descriptors for this strain, right, or this blend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, I I feel like that's kind of fallen by the wayside at this age, and it's just it's super fruit forward. It's like uh, like a, a kind of an off dry cider, or like any of the off white wine cider. grapes you mentioned, except it's got this malt body and a little bit of viscosity, despite that. 10.002 or 1.002 FG Yeah, that I think that slickness, that texture, whatever it is, like I think that to what Chip said, preserves it from just scalding you. I think with dryness. All of this discussion uh, and all of this experimentation in these two and then the next one, the Sour Cherry Funk is, in my mind, is the sort of the point is, what do you get out of these blends? Is it a useful exercise to buy these blends? This is Giggies. They were kind enough to send me this stuff. Here we are still talking about it two years later. I hope they're getting their money's worth out of this. Uh, getting their money's worth out of this. Sponsorship, that's right, yo. But, uh, you know, again, uh, it was easy to make these beers. And I, I this isn't going to... So just being a little bit uh, of crystal I, and some pale? Or yeah, pills. pills. Like, it's definitely, the blend is doing a lot of work. A lot yeah, of the heavy lifting. Sure. Yeah. And I still feel like I will continue to have these beers around for another year or two. I hope I'll save some and get out from time to time. So yeah, I still think it's interesting. It's not mm -hmm. like the best beer ever, but to make a pretty interesting, unique beer at home like this is pretty fun. I don't, I'm not sure on footage tonight, but we're opening the, maybe I'll do a little video, but we're opening the 750s with the corks that you guys showed me how to do in the Brewing TV way back in the day, and I've done that ever oh. since. So when I learned that trick, I got my Portuguese floor corker back here, and, uh... Where'd you learn school. to do the corks like that? To, like... I don't know. I don't know how I got that. That it's might cool. have been, like, a Jeff Halverson thing, or... It's nice to have it labeled. I'm not sure how I got thinking. that. It's a highly if curated you see presentation. It. You'll have to put a photo in here. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, I could, like, bring it over there, but... I think the hair band really yeah, the, the the hair band really ties the room together, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> the hair Not on the hair ties band. The hair band. band. Alright. You're out of your element, Don. We got one more. I am in flavor country. <laughs> Never left. Alright. So, sour cherry funk mild. Uh, a little bit younger. I think I made this beer after the other beers. Um, we drank it in January 2016. Michael Dawson's garage, it was cold, it was, it was, he was brewing, <laughs> we were trying to get the cork out, it was broke off, oh, yeah. Yeah. I had a cork screw, I got a cork screw out, anyway, anyway, it was, Paul it was bottled in December of 2015, it is now almost October 2017, this beer, I feel, has changed even more mm -hmm. than the other ones, which have also changed. This beer is a lot drier. It's more carbonated. I actually had a couple of 12 ounce ones. When I would open them, they would uh, start foaming. So, uh, I mean, and they sat around for a long time before I bottled them. So it just continued to slowly chew away at the 1006, whatever was left in there. Uh, and this one, I think, I didn't write it down here, but I believe this one does have bread in it, um, in the blend. Seems and like so it. I think that stuff just continues to work. What do we think of this? Um, if I remember from what you're telling me, I said 
<laughs> <laughs> I thought it was rich cherry filling last time. I don't get that as much now, so it seems to have either aged that out or maybe eaten away at the sugars or whatever that makes that. Um, yeah. I like this more, I feel like, now, and you yelled at me off camera about that, but because it's, to me, it's a little drier. You know me. I hate my crystals. I hate my super rich, big... Mm. You know, too English even English IPA. I shouldn't say hate, but I just lean away. Probably one. But I do. Send have, me cloth. Well, excuse me. But they're not. Okay, that's, that's a conversation. <laughs> but I do feel like it's thinned out, and now it's, I'm getting more of that, like the chocolatey part of the malt bill. I forgot it was a mild till you just said it, and that is what makes sense. I'm getting way more of the mild. It's a big mild. But not in a way that like get all that bread out of here and just give me a mild. It's got all this other stuff still going on. It seemed like when we drank it the first time, it was trying to do too much all at once. It was trying mm -hmm. to be all of these things, and now I feel like it's kind of like... I think it just depends on either what you like or what it is. I mean, I kind of may have liked it more before, because it had a little bit more of the cherry pie character. A little bit of it. Now it's basically gone. I, I won't even get, I won't even... You like the oomph. When I, I don't even think I would drink this. If I didn't know it was Sour Cherry Funk was the blend, I don't think I would come up with cherry. I would just be saying brat, horse blanket, stuff like that. This I is can my, see that. This is my favorite beer out of the three now, tonight, <laughs> actually. Um, Chip, you said off camera, black forest cake. Whoa, dude. And now I can't not taste that. Um, What's black I, forest cake? It's like the chocolate with the cherries, the white frosting. It's, uh, I think the cherries are still there, but I think they're really low key now and kind of like subsumed, like it's some kind of like mild chocolate notes. A um, little bit of that low level kind of Brett spice. Nothing too pronounced at all about this beer. Like this is a super easy drinking funky beer. It almost comes back to like if you were to enter this and you had to say what it was, the fact that mild is kind of its base category, now it's kind of doing that. It's a specialty version of a mild instead of being right, using mild. a mild grist mill to experiment with something weird. Not weird, but like unknown. A brat, like a Brett mild. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I can see what you're saying, though, too. Like, if you like big flavors and the boldness of that blend was probably more apparent last time. Yeah. It's We're just really dried into, like, out. I mean, yeah. I, do you guys ever take a, another gravity reading? I mean, if I just poured this into a hydrometer... I would try it because it's a 750 and we're going to leave. Would it, would, it, Do it. would it give another... If, when all the carbonation the is gone, would it to, just you, sit there and You'd have to degas it and then you could measure it again and I bet just... <laughs> you'd have to degas it. Yeah, <laughs> if you would have brought the degasser like you anymore. were supposed to. No, I, I think we could pour it back and forth between two. It would give me a reading, right? It would give me a reading. I, I think the between presence. the three of us, we could probably homebrew this. Would it be lower solution? Well, due to the Maybe. presence of the bread and the increased carbonation you've seen, I'd be willing to bet greenback dollars that the gravity has dropped since ten oh six. Yeah, I wonder. Well, I mean, I could do it. I can force them into it's, a thing and check it out. Will they do anyway. it? Anyway. Stay tuned and find out. All right, let me interrupt this program for a second. This is the next morning. I'm having a hard time getting the clear shot, but this beer actually is uh, below zero now. The best I can figure it, it's about... Uh, it looks like it's like 0.996. I find that hard to believe that it would have been 10 points lower. That seems insane to me. I don't know how that's right, but as I look at this thing, it's definitely below zero. It was at 1.006, so I guess it has fermented more, and that's why it's uh, more carbonated and tastes different. I'm surprised it doesn't just blow up, though, if it kept going that much, but uh, it does seem to have kept fermenting. Sounds will like that a lot fill, will that, You know what? Will that fill a hundred You guys, we pounded through these. Thank you guys for coming over. Chop for Chop. Dono for Dono. Don for Don. Uh, Giga Don for Don. Yeast. Kids upstairs for Kids upstairs. We've, uh, yeah. They continue to change over time. And the not, beer or the Kids upstairs? Kids also change over time. <laughs> it's a whole nother video. For better for worse.
Are they drying out? Alright, got that. Alright, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Get that hydrometer jar, boy!